Hey everyone, Jim here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform an SQL injection attack. Now, there are a lot of different platforms you can use SQL injection attacks on. Uh, the, the, the platform we're going to be using today is going to be a LAMP server, so we're going to be using PHP. Uh, PHP is probably one of the most popular web scripting languages out there, uh, and it's a good way to, to test SQL injections. Now, when I first was putting together this demo, um, I was thinking about, well, just maybe I can find another guide online and th that'll work great. Uh, I found this guide and I'll include it, include it in a link in the description below, but uh, the code is really out of date. Um, so I did do some, I did do spend some time updating uh, some of the code on here to get it work on my, uh, my LAMP server, um, just as an FYI, but the description uh, and the overview in this article I thought was uh, pretty good. So now the way that this works is I have the small PHP web application. It's pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just one file. And this essentially has an HTML front end with a form, uh, and then the back end is PHP. Attached to that PHP uh, script is this database. Uh, so as you can see, this is kind of a more or less a straightforward database um, that includes just basic user information. So usernames, passwords, just general data. Um, we can go in here and I'll browse it. There's nothing too scary in here, except the passwords are not hashed. So important thing to uh, keep an eye out for. And this will be a good example for us. Um, so we can log in with one of these users. I'll log in with my Shoal253 account. Uh, if you log in with an account with correct credentials, it'll tell you, congratulations, you verified your credentials. This is your personal information. Um, I can do one more. Uh, if I log in with Crispin, you can see Crispin's information. Uh, if you just are guessing for information and you type in uh, bad details, it's going to tell you to try again. So the way that an SQL injection attack works is it's going to try to manipulate the way the SQL uh, is actually going to be executed on our server here. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull up the source code and I can kind of walk you through it. Now, if you don't know PHP or haven't worked with PHP before, this is probably going to look really foreign. Uh, Typically, web applications have a combination of scripting languages kind of intertwined together. So in this example, we have some HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, kind of all jumbled together. And if you don't know one of those, it's generally OK. But if you don't know any of them, um, it becomes a little bit more tricky. So essentially, what happens is in the top part of this uh, PHP document here, uh, we just have some formatting, some styling with CSS and whatnot. And then we have um, the opening of the HTML body and head tags. And we have our PHP script. So essentially what's going to happen is by default, the form is going to load. And that's that form just asking for uh, username and password, right? But if you've already tried to submit an entry, then something else is going to show up instead of this form. Uh, so assuming you click the submit button on the form, this big if condition within this PHP document is going to trigger. And it's going to connect to the database server. Um, I've removed my password here, but you want to make sure you put your own credentials in there. And it's going to query for the username and the password that you had specified. So it's going to select everything from a user's table, uh, where the user ID is equal to what you entered in, and the password is equal to what you entered in. Um, if you entered in correct credentials, it's going to retrieve the full record for you and display it on the page. If you entered in incorrect credentials, um, it'll tell you as such and give you another opportunity to uh, enter them again. And the way this SQL injection techniques works is it's going to rely on manipulating our PHP code. Uh, and it's essentially going to allow us to change this query and allow it to do something else. So as an example, when I fill out, fill out this form and I click the submit button, what's really happening is the database server is going to run this query and then retrieve or return some results. And I can actually show you how that works. If I load up my web browser here, I have PHP my admin loaded. And this is a very common tool um, just used by just general database admins for working on a LAMP server most commonly. So if you just paste this into a query window uh, and you click go, it's not going to return anything. And that's because by default right here, uh, as you can see, we actually don't have any real details in here. It's just variables for the username and password. So what you can do is, if you wanted to just manually run this query and see how it works, you, see you could put some details in here that you know or suspect should work. And we get that one result back. Now, if you're familiar with uh, database servers, 
you might know there are some ways that you can return or retrieve more than one result. And we can modify this query to do that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to just change this username just to be something totally fake, just a bunch of gibberish. And same thing with the password. So right now, if I were to try to run this query, I'm not gonna get any records, right? The query is a successful query, it's formatted correctly, but there's nothing being returned. So let's modify this. If I wanted to, let's say, retrieve all the records, what I could do um, is do or, and just check to see like, does x equal x? Now, for those of you that have worked with SQL, uh, you will know that yes, x is gonna equal to x. You could have a is equal to a, one is equal to one, five is equal to five, z is equal to z. It's important you have a true statement here. And essentially, if this statement is true, it's going to match up either a username and password that matches this, or it's gonna retrieve everything because it's gonna say, or also give everything back if x equal x. So when I run this, I'm gonna get all of the records back. Because it's looking to see, do we have a user that matches this username or password, or does x equal x? Well, x does equal to x, so let's get back all the results. I'll do this one more time just to kind of explain how this works. And again, this makes a lot more sense if you are familiar with uh, SQL. If you're not familiar with SQL, this is gonna be more confusing. So let's do, does Jim equal to Jim? So the, the, the string J-I-M is equal to the string J-I-M. When I click go, it will then once again, retrieve all the results. Now, I keep saying that I'm gonna show you now how the SQL injection actually works. And it relies on this technique of modifying the query to try to trick it into giving you all the results in a database or in a table to be more specific. So what we're gonna do is we can enter in whatever we want for the user ID. Um, I'd recommend avoiding special characters uh, that can cause issues depending on how your form fields are sanitized and all that stuff. Um, so just no special characters. All this, I can enter an even blah in for the user ID. And then for the password, I would recommend writing out this and you wanna have anything you want, then a single quote, then a space, then or, then a single quote, any character you wanna checks, you say equal to, then you wanna type in single quote, any other character that matches the first one, and copy that into your clipboard and paste it into your password field. And I recommend, recommend doing this like in uh, either the URL bar, URL bar, or in a notepad document, uh, just so you can see what you're typing because if you accidentally have an extra character or if the syntax is wrong at all, uh, it's not gonna work. So click Submit. And now, as you can see, we have all three records. So we've performed our SQL injection. We've essentially just tweaked that SQL query um, and modified it to our liking. So your next question is probably gonna be, well, how do I prevent against this? And honestly, there's a number of things you can do. Probably the easiest and the best thing that you could do is by using prepared statements. And I'm not gonna go into prepared statements in this video today, but I guess I will show you um, just an example of what they look like. Um, so here is a guide that shows prepared statements. Um, and as you can see, when a prepared statement uh, is used, it's formatted a little bit differently. So instead of allowing it to be modified using variables and whatnot, um, it's essentially fixed. So you can only put specific values in and it's gonna make sure that, um, that a potential attacker or threat actor is not gonna be able to modify the query as easily. Um, of course, too, like in this example, like none of the passwords are hashed. So you want, you'd also wanna do that thing and just sound kind of the basic security housekeeping things. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll post the source code and some additional resources uh, under the description. And yeah, I'll talk to you all later.